with me. Uh, so we are uh, talking about uh, domestic violence now. So yeah, just want to check. So we are both and we are going live. Just want to ensure that it's good for me. Ravi, I don't see you online on Facebook. <laughs> okay, yeah, I see. Okay, do you see it now? Yes. Okay. So let's wait for some audience to join in. Hey guys, uh, this is Ravi and Chantana and uh, Sajita on the video. <laughs> so today we are here uh, to spread the awareness uh, of the violence. So uh, we also have uh, Sajita. Hey, Sajita. Yeah, hi. Can you see me? Mm. Not yet. No. Okay. I think I'm just going to sign up. So, hi, guys. Hi, everybody. So, are we live already? Um, yes, we are live. Uh, Samantha. We have Chandana and uh, we also have Samantha and uh, we have Sajita beside us. Uh, yes. 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 Chandra? Yeah. Yeah, great. Chandra, yeah, we have uh, the viewers. Uh, we have around, uh, I think, around 20 people uh, watching us. So uh, thank you guys joining in. Uh, you know, we are basically spreading the awareness about domestic violence. Uh, especially the domestic violence, the uh, rate of cases increased uh, during lockdown because everybody's stressed. Uh, people are losing jobs. People are uh, furious. There's a lot of uncertainty that is uh, you know, spread across. There's a lot of uh, insecurity of jobs. There's a lot of uh, issues or uh, insecurity about health issues that are going around. So we are here to basically spread awareness of uh, you know, what domestic violence is. How do we spread the awareness and stop domestic violence? How do we educate uh, you know men around us uh, who can take the pledge and uh, say that uh, they will not uh, you know indulge in domestic violence at home because of all the challenges and pressure that is building up around. Uh, and for that, we have Chandana. Uh, thank you, Chandana, for taking this initiative. I also have, uh, you know, Sajita with me. Uh, she's a psychologist. Uh, and we will, uh, to start with, we'll have Chandana talk about it, uh, talk about domestic violence. And we also have few guests who have, uh, you know, joined in and uh, who want to talk about, uh, you know, their perspective about uh, domestic violence. So, yeah, over to Chandana. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining. I see a couple of you saying hi. Hi to everyone. We're very happy to uh, do this. The main reason is that uh, because of the global lockdown and the restrictions that have uh, created a situation wherein people are prone to risk of abuse. 
um, so you know they don't have anywhere to go out and uh, these kind of situation is something that occurred to us thinking that okay you know what we need to raise boys and we need to create an awareness how important it is to know what is domestic violence and how can you stop it and you have help so these are few things that we want to cover today and uh, before we proceed with it i was doing a little research and uh, for my surprise i have seen that domestic violence doesn't happen just in hyderabad or just in india or any other state in india it is happening all throughout the world so that means it's a, it needs to touch greater audience and greater audience and need i mean audience need to understand how can we stop it and how can we eradicate the same so uh, a little statistic that i want to share is that france has seen 36% increase in cases and there were two women who were murdered well and then india has seen double the cases in just first week of lockdown and then we have australia where an internet search towards how they can stop domestic violence happening in their house has increased to around 75% and then we have uk where in the helpline has seen 25% increase of calls and contacting through online and also uh, tunisia there is a women affairs minister who told that the rate of uh, domestic violence has increased five times so why has it happened because you are locked down and you know there are so much so much stress that uh, men women children or even parents are going through because it could be many reasons because of stress levels of uh, financially being strained and there's restriction you can't go out you can't meet people and you are locked or caged with one or two people and then you know these kind of things can occur so uh, we are unaware exactly how to go about it or how we, how can we restrict it so that's why we have uh, sajita who is a psychiatrist who's sitting with us can give us a more insight on domestic violence and how can we eradicate the same so we need the experts advice over here than you know we who are uh, who want to make an impact is different but somebody like you can give us insight about how can we eradicate the same okay thank you chandana it's it's really in the need of the hour what you are doing this year so first of all compliments to all of you all for the kind of effort you all are taking and um, one of the best ways i think uh, we can eradicate in terms of abuse, domestic violence domestic abuse is for awareness education okay. now two of the things that actually start uh, you know that that domestic violence feeds on uh, even in normal scenarios are fear and anger okay so if you look currently in the situation we are in which is a lockdown that is that we're facing some people there is anger because this is forced on them they would not want to Uh, man is a social being man and women in that sense we are social beings we like to be out we like to be with people and suddenly that that privilege is taken off it was it's my right to meet people and suddenly when there are rules you know enforced on me saying that i can't go out and meet people automatically there is a level of anger there is a level of fear that starts creeping in Fear moves on the sense in terms of the lockdown. Fear in the sense of you know what would COVID nineteen do to us uh, or to any near and dear one. Uh, there is uncertainty. There's, there there isn't any case near near our area. So should I do lockdown? Is it actually true? Are there so many people dying? Um, does it require such stringent um, you know? These are the questions that people. would tend to ask themselves and uh, this increases the level of uncertainty a person feels because of which they need to take this out on people around them and unfortunately in the time of the lockdown people around them are their family members which is why domestic violence is what we're going to see going up um, in the near future Unless we remain positive during this time, there is, and the only way we can we can we spread positivity is through awareness and education. That's the simplest way for us. Already taking that step 
which is a brilliant way because right now without social media i don't think we can spread this news you know in a better to a better medium so that's as far as it goes great thank you so much for the insight uh, sachita so do we have manthika with us uh, uh, i think manthika will join in uh, in a moment uh, so i think we can start with uh, kalpana garu i yes. think she we already joined it um so let me just uh, stream her uh, so we have uh, ms kalpana hello ma'am um, and she is a go green business so we would like you to share some insights about you know uh, domestic violence and what you think it is that we can be advocates or help people who are watching this thread so the thing is with no violence really i think that is your 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 voice is uh, you know breaking it's not clear uh, can you hear me now yeah yeah it's it's okay it's thank you so um i think we Uh, domestic violence is itself not understood uh, in in its right sense uh, because it's emotional, it's physical, it's uh, sexual, it's also economical. Eh? There are different uh, um, you know layers in this uh, whole thing called uh, domestic violence. Of course, the worst being physical and sexual abuse. Um, and now, being the uh, COVID times, I think it's. Uh, everyone is going through stress even if uh, even if you are not a, a working mother or so everyone is going through stress in the house managing too many things people and not having enough mates and that so and men going through the stress of uh, you know their uh, own work spaces and what the kind of stress they get from work or some even have doubts on uh, their jobs whether they you know a lot of other stress happening and also the victim and the abuser let's say in the worst cases are having to stay together 24 hours right so this is another thing where um you don't know i mean you at least there is no respite i mean you would uh, there's no way you would walk out or take a break or uh, reach out to someone there's no such uh, uh, venting out even so other than sending messages to people so i think the stress kind of plays up the other day i was in my terrace garden i spent at least an hour every day and uh, right next to me uh, in apartment i saw these loud uh, you know exchange of words of husband and wife and it was too loud i mean it's literally the whole community uh, around could hear so these kind of things i mean are you not aware of these things i think people are just venting out and the worst cases i think people who are already going through abuse for them it is really a sad state but i would not say you can stop uh, domestic violence you can only help uh, i would say that don't be uh, silent bystanders like uh, the other day i heard i tried to reach out to someone in their apartment and try to talk to them by then things had kind of come down so when you see something like this i don't think you should just be a bystander try to see how you can help or what you can do or uh, the person who is going through abuse should know that there is someone around i mean even if even if they don't know you but um, i think yeah that the stress situation is kind of building up in different ways a lot of intolerance and um it's not just domestic violence i see a lot of intolerance also happening so uh, it's it's like it's like a combined story i would say it's not something that's happening because of the covid lockdown it's the personality itself you know people how they deal with situations so i think it's uh, you need to introspect a lot to figure out this i don't think you can stop really you you can address you can talk you can counsel you can do these things but um, completely stop domestic violence i don't think there's an answer to that yeah uh, i i agree with you uh, kalpana garu uh, because uh, yeah i also feel that the person personality is the person who's uh, you know uh, indulged in this particular activity and uh, you know once chandana took this particular uh, you know initiative and she wanted to broadcast her research you know 
I think the person who gets involved uh, in domestic violence, you know, they might be really good outside, but their personality inside at home might be different. So they might be really good at social media, they might be really good in some of the activities, but, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, at home, uh, and again, you know, again, we are not specific to the gender, though, you know, most of the cases are related to men. But uh, I think there are a few cases where women are also involved. So, you know, it is not about gender, but, you know, most of the people who are affected are the spouses. Like, you know, most of the time it's the wife uh, who gets affected. The children get affected. So there is domestic uh, violence against the children. Or uh, the children go through a trauma because, uh, you know, the parents are always fighting when they come home. Uh, the domestic violence, I, I personally heard about reports where... Uh, you know, domestic violence is uh, against, uh, you know, the parents. Um, and, you know, one of my friends who's, uh, you know, here in Hyderabad, he's not from Hyderabad, but he had to leave his good uh, management job in a reputed company. He's here to uh, basically solve the problem that her mother-in-law has been, uh, you know, uh, abused uh, uh, just because of the property uh, by his own son. And, you know, uh, the entire family is trying to uh, sort this out. So I, I think there is a lot that's going on, you know, whether it is related to property, whether it's related to the stress that is get, getting built up uh, during this uh, lockdown period. Uh, one of the things which Shandana also pointed out, I think one of the things uh, in this particular lockdown period is that the, uh, the victim doesn't have a breathing, uh, breathing time. You know, earlier, the, you know, the culprit, uh, the person used to go for work. Again, no gender uh, specific terms here, but they used to go for work and there was some breathing space and there was a time to uh, complain about it. But now, uh, you know, uh, the issue is the, uh, the victim is in the same house, uh, the culprit is the same, this continues and uh, the neighbors have to basically take the initiative of, uh, you know, reporting this and uh, ensuring that this is uh, resolved. And uh, yeah, all the people who've joined this particular life, the reason uh, we've taken this particular initiative, I've taken this initiative as, uh, you know, uh, you know, challenge, uh, gentleman challenge, because men, you know, because, uh, you know, men as we dominate the number of cases, uh, you know, on domestic violence, uh, whether we're beating, uh, you know, wife, kids or uh, parents, the number of percentage is high. Uh, I think men should volunteer and you know pledge, share this particular video, pledge saying that they will not involve in domestic violence and spread this word across uh, of no domestic violence because yes, it is stressful period which we all are going through. But I think as uh, you know, uh, Ms. Kalpana has suggested there are you know uh, ways to get out of it. The person realizes that they have this particular issue, they should you know, consult a psychiatrist, uh, talk to somebody. Uh, look at ways and means where they can, you know, uh, overcome this particular issue. I think, you know, everybody has some challenges. The only way to overcome this is seek help and work on it. So, thank you. Welcome. Uh, yeah, Chana, please go ahead. Chana, I think you're on mute. So, yeah. Yeah, can't hear you. One second, I just unmute and yeah. Go ahead, can you try once? Mm, no, can't hear you. Now? Now can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, what was I saying is Ms. Kalpana Ramesh Garu, she shared some numbers with me. Uh, I have shared it with Ravi as well. So we would share that number out and probably, you know, we can share those numbers with people whom you think are going through such kind of crisis and uh, they can reach out to psychiatrists or people who can help them to get out of it. And uh, the first people that you might want to reach out is uh, 100 because uh, the, the police are the one who can actually address it a lot better. And also, if you think that you cannot voice it out, you cannot, you don't want to tell anybody about what you're going through because that happens that you don't want to talk about it to anyone. So rely on people like your best friend or uh, your cousin, probably who's close to you or your neighbor, because uh, normally if you're a housewife, you're very close to your neighbor. So you can talk to your neighbor 
try and see if something can work out in that way because sometimes when you share your burden reduces and you might get some solution to the problem that you're facing at home so always seek help is something that i would uh, want to advise over here and we will be sharing the number thank you so much ma'am for sharing the numbers thanks thanks a lot yes so once again like we have samantha uh, okay So Samantha is your life and yep. Yeah. So, Hi Samantha. Um, Hi. I'm so glad to be part of this. Yeah. She is a psychology nerd and a tarot reader, and we would like to know your views towards domestic violence and what do you think? How can we get out of such kind of crisis that we're going through, especially because of lockdown? See, I think uh, all your points are um, very, very valid, uh, and I know that at this point in time, especially with the lockdown, uh, you know, stuff like stress of just being confined in the house, financial constraints, um, you know, not being able to even access alcohol. These are all, I wouldn't say reasons, but excuses for many, many people. And again, uh, this is irrespective of. Uh, sex age gender you know uh, this this could be even between same sex partners this could be even uh, you know uh, with your in-laws your sisters your cousins whoever you're uh, you know confined uh, in the house with so um, yeah the, the the biggest uh, part is even though uh, the numbers i'm not sure whether anyone has sh shared the numbers that have come up for march which was over 500 uh, reported cases but uh, you know when i when i looked at them of course there are there must be another hundred few another few hundreds that are unreported uh, but but i would like to actually um, you know sort of bring light upon you know a lot of cases that are in the midst of abuse that they are victims of abuse but they aren't aware you know and especially now during this lockdown they are probably feeling the horrors of it they are feeling like the suffocation of it but they aren't really aware that they are victims of abuse you know and that's why i feel it's so important to really know what domestic violence comprises of you know so so you actually are like you know what like this is abuse and i shouldn't be in this sort of environment versus like is this normal and you know you sort of question yourself you're confused you're not you don't really know but you're struggling you know so i think uh, i think that bit is really important where you're aware that yes you are in the midst of abuse so you can take your next step you know so that awareness i think is very important um so i mean if we have time i can list i can sort of read out a few things that talk about what abuse comprises of violence comprises of so you know you just people can be made aware that this this these are the sort of points that fall under domestic violence and of course like see we're all human beings we all tend to err i'm not saying we're all you know 100% saints we all uh, you know sort of shout at our kids shout at our spouses at times and uh, you know sometimes we we may even find ourselves guilty of shaming our kid for not solving a math problem you know all those things that is human i would say but i think domestic violence is when you're being cornered into a uh, fear like i would say every second of your day you know so that to me is domestic violence and also stuff like you know when you're constantly being told uh, stuff like you know oh you can never get anything right you know or when a partner or somebody in your in your house shows extreme jealousy when you're with your friends you can't really be with the people you want to you can't really dress the way you want to you can't really be the person you want to be uh you know every little step has to be thought of um because you're scared you might be cornered into some sort of threat into some sort of like intimidation uh so i would say that is when when you're constantly struggling to take the next step in your own house because you're scared you might be cornered you might be picked on you might be um, you know sort of um, abused you know that's when you are a victim of abuse and that's when you got to sit back and think about what can i do next to move out of this unhealthy environment yeah 
I can't. Uh, Ravi, your your voice is muted. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, good points, man. Do you want to read out the statement? Which you yeah. Have, uh, so, written? so I just have a few points. So there is, um, of course, like when you are constantly told that you can never get anything right, when uh, you know a partner shows extreme jealousy when you're with your friends. Uh, when he or she keeps you away from your family and friends, like he gets wild or she gets wild when you're with your family or friends, uh, when there's constant insulting, demeaning or shaming, you know, uh, like something like, oh, you're just good for nothing. You're just a lazy old hag, you know, things like that. This is this is just very mild. But yeah, it can get worse uh, when there's constant insulting, demeaning. Um, and again, we don't really speak about the financial bits when you know the husband or the wife controls every penny like they they deny you from necessary expenses okay they, they deny you uh, from giving you money for your you know just something like going to the parlor or something like you know just buying um, something that you really like you know so just small things when you're constantly begging pleading you know covering yourself you know from shame uh so that is another point the financial bit um then i would say when someone is controlling who you see where you go prevents you from making decisions uh, tells you that you're a bad parent constantly you know uh, you're constantly being told that you're not a good mother, or you're not a good father. You're just, you know, uh, I think that as well as emotional abuse, you know, um, then uh, denies you from working, uh, destroys, destroys your property. There are cases uh, that has come up where, you know, stuff that you own has been just destroyed, you know, out of jealousy, out of anger. And that's not right. That is violating someone's privacy, violating someone's property, you know, things like that. Um, intimidating you, if you take it a step higher, intimidating you with guns, knives, weapons. Okay, that's abuse as well. Um, pressurizing you to use drugs to have alcohol pressurizing you into sex when you're not comfortable um i think all of these points are really really valid and this is something that is very important for people to know uh, when it's constantly hitting you every day of your life at home people should sort of sit back and ask themselves okay does this fall under abuse am i really a victim of abuse because I think that is the biggest um, that is the biggest obstacle one can cross when they know that yes they are in an environment that is not fit for them that is not healthy for them. Yeah. Very true. It's a great insight. Point uh, the root cause of you know how this starts. Uh, and yeah, apparently alcohol <clears throat> seems to be one issue. Uh, mm -hmm. People addict to alcohol. Not getting access to it, uh, alcohol is pricey. If there is any, you know, uh, other ways of getting it, uh, this in also includes smoking because uh, you know people are not getting access to it. Uh, only certain ration shops or you know, supermarkets are available, and not everybody sells cigarettes. So there is uh, an availability of cigarettes also in the uh, market. So people who are addicted to nicotine uh, will go through a lot of trauma uh, in this particular situation. I think, uh, but this. They should take it uh, take it positively and then try to uh, you know have control on their addiction and try to overcome it rather than you know showing up uh, you know the frustration on uh, their family members. Correct, and I think um, like you know I mean this pledge is um, it's basically to take action against violence by not being silent. You know, and it's not really about, you know, OK, I'm not going to raise my hand or I'm going to keep my home peaceful uh, and I'm not going to. Pardon? Yeah. And it's not about just keep, you know, about keeping your own home peaceful and safe. But it's really about speaking up for those in your family, in your neighborhood, in your school, at workplace. There's a lot of us who've also come across the domestic help that, you know, have spoken about abuse. And of course, you know, we can't really interview too much, but we have to tell them, you know, where they can go, who they can speak with. Uh, we can we can offer support of, you know, being there for them, you know, if they make a choice. 
things like that i think uh, it's it's that and yeah it's it's just education okay i'm getting I'm getting uh, yeah, it's about yeah. educating uh, right yeah. so that's uh, dr nirmali garu uh, so she's suggesting that you know there should be a lot of education that should a lot of education yes. yes so yeah thank thanks sir uh, and I, i think we also have another guest uh, who wants to share their uh, perspective uh, chandra Chandana, can't hear you. Yeah, I think I am. So that's really difficult. Yeah, Samantha, the points that you have shared is amazing, and people are appreciating you on uh, the watch party. Watch party, saying that you're making really good statements, and it's true. It is not just physical, physical emotional, uh, you know, abuse as well comes. So one thing that I want to make a point is that it's not just men. who uh, indulge in uh, domestic violence it's women kids parents so we are not specifying just because we name this gentleman doesn't mean that we are telling that men are the only one who indulge in abuse we have all the genders equally you know uh, putting fire on things and probably you know making it worse in our houses so that's something that we want to bring out that we're not pointing out one gender Uh, it happens with most of us and we are here to share and uh, see how we can get out of it and as uh, ms nalini kuneru had mentioned it's educate educate and educate so education is the only thing that we can keep uh, spreading right now so uh, we have a speaker sureka a small help can you turn your camera because we can oh, yeah. thank you So we have Sureka. She's uh, all the way from Philippines. How's it in Philippines, Sureka? Hi, Sureka. Hi. Hi. It's not candy. <laughs> It's not Same here. So yeah, so Sureka is a creative writer, and uh, she is Empress Universe Mrs. Philippines in 2018. A very good friend of mine, and uh, she would want to share. a little bit about her insight towards what is our perspective towards domestic violence well actually according to me tapta uh, has shared a lot of views on domestic violence but i wanted to go a little bit deep into it means the root cause of domestic violence i wanted to go back to the child phase when from where an actually woman actually he what to do in the family when a um, a small child see his father or his mother mistreating each other he gets the option to mistreat other persons also when he grow up as a kid uh, as a big human being so that's what happens with most of the people that uh, you know uh, when he see that his father is shouting at his mother in the home and he see that it's very logical you know you you can grow up and shout at any woman you want to and uh, it's very normal to shout at women and uh, especially um, most of the kids are also taught by their own mothers that this girl is not right this girl is characterless based on the way they clo- they wear the clothes this girl is going to the market a lot yes this happens in most of the areas in india that if a woman is going to the market most of the times she is deemed as characterless <laughs> so uh, even women pinpoint such kind of things against another woman So you know, these kind of things happen actually in most of the areas in India still, and uh, I'll not pinpoint uh, alone our country. Domestic violence is very common worldwide, so it's not something that's here only. But it goes to much to the education as a childhood, what a boy or a girl have when they were a kid. So a mother, how she treats her uh, kid like a son or a daughter. it more depends on that so when a mother say that you know uh, all genders are equal you should not distinguish between you should give them whoever you meet you should give respect to them and she is also not showing such kind of habits that she is not uh, pinpointing some girl pinpointing some other aunt who is in the neighborhood pinpointing some other boy so you know this actually uh, gives a sense of uh, responsibility in that child and that child always grows up 
and gives respect to his uh, companion to his um, his um, neighborhood lady anyone that child always gives respect so for me uh, i think this is the best time when a woman can give a best education to their children about domestic violence and about respect respecting other person during childhood when the person is child so it should be started right from the as a life skill it should be started right when the kid is a very small something like that so i wanted to say that as most of the points have been raised by samantha already <laughs> Yes, thank you so much, Rekha. Well, I have one of my friends, Nidhi Sharma. Okay, we we have uh, Ankita. Who just ping saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that. Additionally, great. she believes that awareness should be raised early, and it should be part of the education system. Right. Yeah, I also agree with that. Uh, I think this should start with uh, schooling itself, uh, as uh, Dr. Murnali also mentioned. You know, uh, some of these things should start uh, you know, for, at the education level. Yeah. So Chandana, I think we also have uh, Ankita. Uh, who's there? Do you want us? Do you want me to take her? Yes, please. Yes. Hi, Ankita. Hi, Chandana. Thanks for having me over, and uh, uh, congratulations because this was one topic which is there on everybody, uh, uh, everybody's mind that you know. This is one topic about which uh, you know people don't talk about often. That's true. The reason being, uh, yeah, because uh, they feel that you know how many people will listen to it, how many people will acknowledge what you've said. But yes, it is very much around. And uh, when we are just uh, when we are, the people have this uh, uh, interpretation that it's just about physical abuse, but it is a lot more than physical abuse. It has an emotional aspect. It has so many other aspects. So uh, while most of the things are covered, uh, there was one thing which I had done when the lockdown started, and I think that can be done at various other places uh, in India. I had taken up an initiative wherein uh, I formed a group and uh, I invited people to be a part of that group, and we went through a happiness program. So the underlying causes that is stress, anxiety, panic, financial situations, whatever you are having in your mind, you can just vent out in their group. Nobody will judge you. Nobody will think that why are you thinking so. Uh, everybody will respect your emotions, good, bad, ugly, whatever you are feeling, and uh, we'll try to offer solutions. Like many a times there was, a, the, many people had this anxiety that, you know, how things will work out. There are financial issues. How will we, you know, deal with it? We can't have our spouses around the entire day. We are not used to it. And uh, this might create more, more conflict. So we used to help them vent out their emotions. We used to give them different tasks daily so that today you can do this to, you know, have your own me time. And when you have your me time, I think you are on the positive note. We also made them talk to their spouses and, uh, you know, the couples were uh, made to sit and talk that we know this is the time of crisis. We know that we'll be having bouts of emotions. We'll try and talk it out and take out some positivity out of this. So it, it had a wonderful response. There were more than 100 people participating. And this is one thing which can be, you know, done uh, by all the people around. Because when you know that these th these times are stressful, these are the times when, you know, you're actually not feeling good. And uh, though you try to look at the positive side of things, there are days when you feel bored, anxious. There are days when, you know, the positivity meter also comes down in spite of knowing that, okay, this too shall pass. You cannot have this always, a happy face always. So you need a place where you can vent. You need a place where you can 
expressed without being judged so uh, this was one thing uh, which was really helpful and which helped in keeping the emotional meter fine i mean there was an emotional checklist every day how are you feeling today you just need to pen down you just need to write down you know how are you feeling today and you we, we used to help them work out on their anxieties on their fears when it comes to domestic violence one major factor which is there is that uh, fear is one major factor uh, because of which people cannot express you know that this thing is happening they are fearful that how uh, others will react they are fearful that you know what kind of judgment will someone pass when i express that this kind of thing is there there is a self image which cannot be disturbed that also happens many a times so that is one thing which i like to i would like to appeal that you have to remove that fear you have to reach out to people who can help you you need to voice up voice what you're feeling you need to express what you're feeling uh, they say na baat karne se baat banti hai so this is one thing which i feel that you need to reach out to people i'm sure that there is help available only if you choose to you know take that help and uh, i know it's not easy always but it's not that difficult also so like the the group that uh, ankita is talking about i was part of the group and there were so many women you know this is small class like in they wear a red lipstick and take your selfie and share and then we did this wish bottle right the gratitude yeah. uh, yeah a gratitude jar yeah i i believe that you know uh, in the hustle bustle of life you often forget to thank uh, for your blessings thank god for your blessings and that is one thing which makes so much of difference you just sit and write for what i made it as a family activity so i think when you do something like this as a family it creates a positive aura and environment in your family as well you know when i am asking about somebody's emotions uh, for example if i'm asking my spouse how is he feeling how is he taking the lockdown are there any anxieties do you wish to express something uh then then it gets easier you know and most of the times the anger is just pent up emotions which you can't express and you don't know how to deal with it so if if we talk about such things it gets much more easier if the mm-hmm. mother is getting angry on the child and then feeling guilty that why did i you know shout on my child but rather than you know uh, if she uh, expresses that she's feeling this pressure she's feeling you know to be uh, at this time one thing which came up again was that the mothers want to become super moms they are doing the household chores as well as they want uh, this lockdown period to bring a transformation in their children and uh, amidst you know being a perfect woman the mothers forget that they are you know they need to also have their own lives so uh, giving themselves yeah <laughs> so they forget their me times just to become a perfect mom a perfect wife a perfect daughter in law so at that time i think you need to ease down then you won't have those anger burst anger outburst you can have your me time and that goes for all of us you know we need our own space if we get that then uh, uh, emotions like anger emotions like this outburst and shouting and all those anxieties i mean those things are reduced if you have your me time if you are you know spending time uh, in some hobby or something it can be half an hour to your own self and there should be lots and lots of positive talk positive activities which a family can take up and can make it a routine so that uh, you know everybody's emotions are in check you cannot please everybody all the time you have to understand that and you cannot you cannot be perfect uh, with due consideration to that you need to express more talk more and whenever you have some problem you know if you are not feeling right about something you need to reach out to people that is uh, that is the key to you know prevent domestic violence and to uh, create awareness like you said education is the key awareness is the key to talk about more, to talk more about it is the key yeah yeah i would say that yeah it's very important that whoever is going through a tough time during this phase they shouldn't feel alone in in this they shouldn't feel yeah. alone in this yeah that support help groups is, always help help is there you know and even yeah. if it's in a friend or in your mother or somebody <clears throat> just reach out and talk you know yeah yeah so, and people have this fear that you know they should not reach out to a psychologist they feel that you know this is i've not in that stage i am not really you know uh, 
you know, a mental to, you know, reach a psychologist. So that barrier, I think they should pass on, uh, you know, uh, overcome and then talk That's to uh, a psychologist true. and you know, uh, come out. So, uh, Ankita, what, what are the first questions you ask uh, as a psychologist to somebody, let's say, you know, come across this? I mean, I, I just wanted to make sure that people are feeling easy, that they mm -hmm. can, the psychologists are friendly, they, they, they don't torture, uh, you know, uh, when you approach them. So what, what are yeah. they, how do you make your uh, clients comfortable? First thing which I tell them that uh, this will be completely confidential. You won't be judged. That is something which they need to listen because many of many a times they don't open up with a fear of being judged. They feel that if I open up like this, if a person like me, you know, says that I have done like this or uh, my uh, partner has done like this, it if there are judgments involved, people cannot open up. You need to tell them that it's confidential. You're not being judged. You can just vent out and express how you feel, whatever you feel and whatever you want to say. And uh, you have to be very patient because they may take 10 minutes to start. They may take 15 minutes to start. You have to be pretty patient and you need to give that space. And even when they are crying, you just have to let them go with the flow. It's okay. It's so it's perfectly fine to feel what they are feeling. And you just have to be a very good listener. Uh, and be very, very empathetic, not sympathetic. I, I stress on the word empathetic. And uh, uh, once uh, I think it's very easy. It, uh, people usually, you know, uh, I have seen that these days that people don't have that block to visit a psychologist or a psychotherapist because of the awareness. And uh, many people are reaching out for help. And there are support groups and uh, there are some very good Facebook groups which I can recommend wherein, uh, you know, people can vent what they're feeling. Like Mommy's World for You and Me is one group wherein uh, you can just express what you're feeling. You can just express even as an anonymous. So uh, I think the block which you're uh, saying is uh, not seen much these days. People are comfortable. But yeah, you need to um, uh, make them believe in you and... Uh, I think uh, the the sentence that this is confidential and you're not being judged helps for me, uh, works for, I think, any psychologist. Great, so thank you. I think yeah. during this lockdown period, uh, you know, uh, some of these people who are experiencing, uh, you know, have symptoms or experiencing uh, domestic violence intentions can approach you via... You know, video call also, you know, instead of coming to the clinic. Mm -hmm. Definitely, you know, definitely. Yeah, they can reach out to me and I'll be more than happy. We do run an initiative which is called as Need to Talk Initiative at our clinic, wherein we believe that uh, when whilst we are professionals in our own lives, but each of us is living 100 lives in our minds. And uh, that thing we cannot tell to anybody, at times not even to our best friends, at times not even to the people who are very close to us and uh, this platform is just for those people who cannot express it to anybody else so that is why we said that need to talk so wherever somebody feels that you just have to vent out we are the shoulder uh, we are uh, we are those listening ears where you can vent out whatever you feel and empty your head with us <laughs> thank you so much ankita so ankita is a doctor homeopathic physician She's a psychotherapist. She's an author. She's written a beautiful book on uh, pregnancy and how you carry pregnancy out. And then she's a social activist. Uh, she goes to school. She talks to girls and uh, help them out from any crisis or situation that they are in. She's a blogger and a motivational speaker. Thank you so much, Angita, for your insight. Thank, Thank you Anita. for having me over. Thank you. Thanks a lot for having me over. Thank you. Thank you, Angita. And uh, thank, thank you. we also have uh, uh, Akansha uh, who joined in. Yeah, I think Sajita also has a point uh, before Akansha, you know, uh, joins in. Yeah. Sajita, you know, your voice is not coming through. What is it? Uh, yeah. I couldn't hear the question. What it is? Uh, no, uh, Akansha, you I, uh, just give a minute. Uh, yeah, you are audible. Uh, we just have Sajita who is uh, trying to pitch in. Uh, okay. 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 As I was saying, for those who are going to use at home, okay, um, one thing that 
we should be a little aware about. There is something that is called the abuse cycle. Okay. The person who abuses you um, would apologize, would cry, would might sometimes hold your hands after physical violence. And then, you know, by, uh, by virtue of who we are, uh, we are positive. You know, so we say, okay, let's be positive. Let's forgive this person. He's going to change. He's going to, you know, um, come back and things will become better. I want to be a positive person. So I give this person another chance. I give this person another chance. But then there is something that will trigger off violence again. And then the complete cycle starts all over again. There is violence, there is abuse, there is apology, there is this makeup period, and then they get back into a trigger, again, a violence. Abuse is a long behavior. Abuse, definitely, if you are going through abuse, it is mandatory that you get in touch with somebody. If you think the person is going to change, the person who is abusing you is going to change, sorry to say you're living in paradise. It, the person needs help. To change nothing is wrong with you okay please remember you need to step out ask for help because if you're if sometimes just out of, uh, of this feeling of positivity we try to hope that the situation will become better but many people remain in that mood and they don't step out and even ask for help because of this one fear they think their own husband or uh, whoever is using them will change Ask for help. Take help and then try whatever is possible. But don't forget the very crucial step of asking, stepping out for help. Just wanted to mention that. I think, Sajita, just a second. I mean, what you had said was very relevant because um, it's, it, it is a cycle. It's manipulative behavior, right? It's manipulative behavior. So, I mean, they, they sort of pull you in and they sort of shower you with all the attention, all the love, and then uh, they isolate you. And that's when uh, they, they give you that first sign of threat and violence. And then you sort of shake it off saying, OK, it must have been. Pardon? It's a game of power and control. Yeah. And you shake it off thinking that, OK, it was just an isolated case. You know, I can sort of just excuse it. But it happens again. And you know you go through that cycle again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm done. Sam, so over to Chandan now. Um, yes. Thank you so much, Sajita. That was really a great insight. Yeah. So we have Akanksha all the way from Delhi. How is it over there, Akanksha? Can't hear her. Probably her mic is muted. One, one second. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. On, uh, unmute. Now, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you Hi, for yeah, having me here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, answering the question of Chandana asked that how is Delhi, how it's going, I would say just I'm grateful that I have food, shelter, and family. That's all I can say. Because during this pandemic, I won't say like if, if a person is not having any of it, then uh, I would say, I don't know, like I cannot really comment over that thing. So. And um, yeah, talking about like uh, just Sajita, Sajita, right? The lady who spoke just before me, right? So yeah, just uh, exactly what Sajita said that the person will never change whatever you can do. So I would like to, uh, I can relate it with my past life because uh, being a young and uh, I, I, I want to convey this me message to most of the youngsters out there because uh, we often tend to fall for, uh, you know, a person, you know, a girl or a boy at very young age and we name it love. And then, uh, you know, and then we come across such situations like the, uh, for example, very basic example I can give that I, I had also fallen for a boy and then he, all of a sudden his behavior changed, he was over positive and he started ordering me things and a lot of things happened and sooner or later uh, my heart was saying that this person loves me a lot but then my brain was giving me the red flag no, this person is not right for me. So I realized and I ended up things with him. And after a few years, I get to know that he attempted suicide. 
and from doctors we got to know about that uh, he his mental state was unstable so there are people out there who are doing this uh, like uh, unintentionally i would say their mental state is not stable at all so they do things and they feel like they own it and they do not regret it even so it could be anything we uh, human mind is uh, vast and we really need to understand and it can vary from person to person i would say so i know i am slightly off the topic but uh, so that thing happened with me and that how i can relate like for me it was not really a violence i saved myself from it i knew that if i had been involved in that uh, situation with him so i would have been suffered very badly so that's all i want to say yeah good point akansha yeah that's exactly we were saying you know the personality which uh, this person mm-hmm. showcases to public on social mm-hmm. media friends mm-hmm. might completely get that what uh, they are about with family when they go back so mm-hmm. you know, intentions versus you know the, the point which sajita raised you know the person has this particular cycle he knows okay well, you know i i have the liberty to do domestic violence and because i know what yeah. the steps i can do to overcome mm-hmm. and you know, get my wife back or you know uh, you know some chocolates to the kids or you know, some toys you know they are okay so they they know the cycle and they intentionally do that yeah uh, again uh, uh, the purpose of this particular uh, you know meeting uh, or webinar or awareness is basically men volunteering saying that i pledge that we will not do it because the percentage mm-hmm. of men, uh, involving mm-hmm. in violence is high that's the reason mm-hmm. i i am also you know part of this particular initiative as a man uh, i had few friends who i invited on a lighter note <laughs> you know <laughs> okay. yes i will definitely join this particular uh, you know uh, live broadcast because i want to complain about my wife and you know i, I was like i don't believe that <laughs> they like exactly that is what is happening i will prove it i will you know show my braces uh, you know on the <laughs> live broadcast mm-hmm. and I, i don't see them here <laughs> so Hey guys, yeah, this is a right opportunity if you want to complain about your wife. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, we we also want this to be on a lighter note. This should to be on a lighter note so that people, uh, you know, uh, get the message. Uh, you know, like uh, Dr. Manali also sent this message. It is one life. You know, I don't think so. We have time for hatred. Uh, you know, uh, doing domestic violence and you know, we have time for it. so uh, a person who really enjoys uh, so ravi uh, life i think we should uh, ravi have time for all that uh, so ravi go ahead i think video is paused yeah i think chandana your uh, yeah, chandana's boy might be uh, having some challenges so uh, yeah in the meanwhile uh, mrinali garu says one should not think of life revolves around spouses uh give space uh, you know i think she meant for both of them uh give space to your husband uh, let him enjoy life give space to your wife um uh, you know have pets that that's mm-hmm. a good point uh, mm-hmm. you know uh, having pets i think also makes a lot of difference it changes the way uh, uh you you bring in care <clears throat> for somebody uh pick up hobbies gardening etc yeah so mm-hmm. you- one thing i have to say ladies please in your own time try and uh, include exercise okay because that's something that give you the best kind of chemicals for your brain i'm not talking about your body i'm talking about exercise because physical exercise when we we're not talking about the hard work at home uh we're talking about you know at me time whether i do exercises for myself okay that gives you the best kind of endorphins to make you with this kind of that's the least one the least you can do for yourself yeah okay. and uh, men if women are coming to you with a broom during the lockdown that's only to <laughs> 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 broom the house yeah. please clean the house <laughs> <laughs> but yeah intentions are asking for help so that you can groom the house yeah so 
yeah all the men who, who basically you know, there are a lot of people who are working from home now so a lot of men working from home so take time out you can still help uh, in some household activities i i'm doing that so just don't take excuse that okay my six i have a lot of meetings lot stress and you know i don't want to contribute to work either i think it's just a lame excuse So, so you know, that is what you want no, to say. No, and I must say there are a lot of men who are helping out. So though we are, though the topic is a domestic abuse, I guess we are, we are reaching out to the men who can take that pledge, the Me Too pledge, uh, for you know, uh, saying that they are going to be supportive fathers, supportive brothers, supportive husbands, and supportive friends. I think even for women, sometimes you know. If they have a supportive friend in a person, that helps. You know, so and yeah, and basically how to keep the peace at home. You know, I think yeah, it's very important to not keep coming in the way of each other. You know, to make little little slots of time for your own self. That's important, so mm -hmm. that you know you come back together, share, and then go back. You know, so I think when you depend on each other too much to get through the day, that's when the friction builds. That's true. Know, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think taking some time out uh, really works for me also. Uh, so, you know, whenever I'm stressed, I have a lot of this thing. I, I rather you know go for a walk uh, in the morning or you know, during that time, so that uh, you know it it really eases out uh, you know the stress. So, have some music, listen to music, like, put your headset on, and go for a walk. Yeah, not right now because right now we are supposed to be uh, isolated. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, walking exercises that you can do at home. Right home yeah. sort of walk a mile, twenty minutes, thirty minutes, burn out, half burn out. Uh, exercise on YouTube, time a dozen. So. Yeah, I, I like the comment made by uh, suggestion by Pranali uh, Garu. Stay away from some time. So basically, she is suggesting take a sabbatical, stay away from your couple. I mean, as a couple. For some time, so that you know, you know. I think what she meant is, uh, you know, you will understand the importance. Stay away so, in the during the day, for some yeah. time, and then come back. Oh, uh, sorry to interrupt you guys. So I was reading uh, this article, and I came across this word called uh, soul distancing. So you are in the room. uh and two people are there and if you feel like that a uh, neg your negative vibe is coming from other person then you can keep it in the mind ki okay this person is like this and during this situation during this quarantine this person will not become better this person will become even worse so you have to keep in the mind that this person is like this and it gonna go worse so keep your mind okay this is like this okay fine i'm done i'm cool let him say whatever he wants to say that's it that's done so soul distancing really works accepting i'll try yes. that uh, yeah acceptance <laughs> Uh, so Ravi, we would have uh, Samuel who will be joining us. I'm not sure if you see him on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, not yet. Yeah, he's not joined yet. Uh, but uh, any points, uh, Suraika? Do you want to uh, add it? Uh, yeah, actually, I wanted to talk about saying that. Yeah, yeah you're a bit tilted. Uh, you or your camera? I mean, not sure which one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, actually, I wanted to share something with you guys that I was not actually earlier. I was not comfortable to share it with you, but um, earlier uh, I have one of my friend who suffered a lot in this domestic violence, and uh, not just from the side of her in-laws and husband who mistreated her, but also from the side of uh, her parents because her parents were not ready to accept her. even after her agony and uh, the pain she suffered because uh, she will bring this respect to the family she will bring you know this honor to the family and maybe her little sister will not get married so these kind of things and stigma stick with the domestic violence cases that i have seen with my friend and she was really unable to decide where to go she can't even go to her parents home she can't stay at her in-laws home so what to do and she has a meager salary to have a and one small kid so i was actually helping her out making her understand the things i was actually finding out a lawyer for her and trying uh, to contact different ngos for her to find her help 
but actually but actually uh, i am not able to understand why it is a stigma for the parents to accept their girl when she is already you know abused in her in-laws home by her husband and i don't understand what this stigma is actually you know how will it stop the marriage of other kids in the home i don't understand this basically so i want to ask this question basically so can you please lie put the light on it yeah i think that awareness stop- has to come you know from the parents I, i think we still have to get out of uh, you know uh, you know traditions are good uh, i am sure these are uh, you know good points that are like kept in place but uh, you know some of these uh, rituals that you know ek bar ladki you know leave the home you know there, there is no welcome back home Uh, so i think that has to change eventually and uh, a lot of support has to come from the husband and you know a man here in this particular situation things are not working out i think he should uh, you know if both of them have uh, decided that uh, you know it is better for us to be separated i think the man has to take the wife home uh, to their uh, parents and uh, basically you know ensure that uh, there is something else done and you know, she she finds a better soul because things are not working out so uh, it's just not the husband's duty that you know okay we parted and then you know uh, the story ends here that's my i think it's also victim of uh, societal pressure which is yeah. very yes. very rampant in in india and in uh, many other uh, societies but yes it's being a victim of uh, societal pressure yeah. but things i think have changed in metros but in villages you still have uh, you know people the entire village wants to know uh, you know uh, what you're doing what your husband is doing tumhare kitne bachche ho gaye tumko kitna salary milta hai all these questions just are you know like rapid fire questions as soon as you go to that place ha ya kitne saal ho gaye teen saal ho gaye shaadi karke abhi tak bachcha nahi hua so these things are like these things have not changed but i think in metros uh, you know people have uh, you know understood that uh, you know it is now shaadiya jitni jaldi hoti hai and you know we also have uh, you know failures not failures but people have decided that you know they, they want to make better choices in life so this is different here uh, marriages jo hoti hai means uh, uh, most of the places this girl i'm talking about she stays in delhi she is completely born and brought up in a delhi and her parents have completely shifted to delhi way before you know Uh, so she is a not a girl from a rural area but uh, and the parents are also not a, uh, not from a rural area they are in the government employee in delhi so uh, but still uh, you know this stigma of uh, these kind of things they are not uh, just uh, limited to the rural areas they are more into urban yeah. as well. so we cannot yeah. actually distinguish i totally agree with sureka for the point that she has made because it is more of the state of mind of a person what he or she wants to be rather than you know we uh, telling that only rural area is not you know are the ones who cause such kind of problems or have these uh, domestic violence happening it happens everywhere like in uh, we were mentioning before that it can be emotional bubble just because you're frustrated oh, as a woman okay i can talk just because i have so many things to do at home sometimes i get so paranoid i get angry and i verbally abuse so it can happen with anybody and uh, in that way you know you will intrigue your mother to become more verbally abusive towards you or emotionally abusive towards you so things like this can happen so it's all about you as a person if you want to change you want to make a change or be a change is what matters is what i believe in yes. so yes. Thank you. Yeah, the same situation. I I would say you know uh, depends on what is the so, uh, social status of the, the family. Uh, like the father is like a director, or you know he's been a panchayat head. Though he's living in Delhi, he's got he's very reputed in the this thing. His reactions would change based on what is uh, a common man would. I would say in this particular situation, uh, situation would uh, accept uh, her daughter back quite comfortably than a person. who is more worried about what society would think uh, of her uh, you know of her coming back so i think you know each person in the family will play a big role and depends on their you know mentality their uh, social status how they think about uh, life 
how to they think about uh, you know they they got a bit especially you know achi ho that is one way of looking at it and uh, you know she has to be in a good house is one of the way of looking at it so yeah, yeah i think what uh, jonathan kiran yeah. had mentioned i feel yeah. it's important for people to understand the meaning of violence many assume that it is physical but it's not just physical it starts first mental you know it's a mental level so it's all about how you control like in there's a book that i read your mind is a battlefield if you know how to control your mind i think everything else can be controlled yeah one needs to be very strong for it and i think it's also mentality right like i mean i think uh, we there was this movie that had come out recently thappad that that also sort of brings up this issue and i think it's just it's just the fact that you think it's okay to raise your hand you know you think it's okay and you know you've normalized it okay she's my wife you know i mean i can i have all the rights i think that that mentality starts that, that's also something probably that he is touching upon where it starts at the mental level where you think it's okay and you normalize it you know so yeah yeah thank you so much thank you for your inputs yep and i believe sam is online if we can take him in yeah sam you Yes, Sam, you're going live and uh, live with us. It's Don't be scared, of Sam. He was hesitant to come because he has overgrown blood on him. So, <laughs> all right, hi. No audible. Yeah, you're audible. Uh, Introduction you, about Sam. I'm a bit closer. I have a very major problem. I cannot listen to to my own ear headphones. All right, fine. It's not a problem. a little introduction about samuel he's a movie director uh, he's he is someone with a lot of insight so i i wanted to pull him to speak a little about what he thinks about domestic violence and how men can take a pledge is what uh, samuel would be sharing with us um all right um, really a very big topic to speak about domestic violence um because uh, when i started researching upon violence against the women uh, let's say uh, it's been like 4 years I, i've been researching on this particular scenario so um i have to think from the point where the violence starts like for example uh, if a rapist uh, thinks that he has to rape a woman so i, I just wanted to uh, get into his mind i just wanted to think like how he uh, starts thinking about a rape so it's a rapist point of view so um for example we have to kill the idea in his mindset i don't think so it should go until the physical violence but mentally he should be prepared that i am not going to do this uh, i mean like you know um, as i have already mentioned in the comments previously um uh, you know uh, there should be severe punishments which have to be taken you know uh, to uh, um to avoid all these kinds of situations hello am i audible hello yes we can hear you yeah i think sam got disconnected uh... Okay, I all are we getting him back, Sam? Uh, yeah, I think he's connecting again. Uh, so I think uh, yeah, we'll do this for Sam. Okay, good points. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was it was definitely nice to see another guy as nunalini had said yes yeah. <laughs> so he's uh, finding it difficult to connect back okay so maybe the internet uh, yeah i think it's... yeah but jonathan uh, good point uh, you know i wanted to add up a new point in uh, Jonathan, uh, the rest of the audience, Jonathan is one of the most efficient uh, team member uh, I have ever come across. Uh, so, 
yes uh, the importance is to have patience uh, before reacting and a lot of love uh, it doesn't really matter it is not restricted to your family members but uh, everybody across uh, i think that's that's the only solution for this um, a lot of patience and uh, a lot of love uh, so and all not always physical you know, a lot of words which we use uh, against our spouses uh, sarcasm uh, some of these things also result in uh, you know uh, losing trust losing what we need sarcasm is good in memes and uh, you know it <laughs> need not be uh, used for trade uh, on your family uh, or friends so i think uh, you're losing uh, uh, you know things there where you know we uh, use sarcasm a lot based on movies uh, a lot of violence also comes from movies that's what i believe in uh, yes. because uh, yeah, they walk out of a movie theater after we see a action movie you know your speed of your vehicle changes uh, so <laughs> that's really true uh, try to enact as men we try to enact as a hero the women try to you know uh, and act as uh, you know the heroine of the movie and you know Uh, the and the thing is, uh, the c- cinema normalizes all of this, right? Like we think it's okay, it's yeah. normal. Mm-hmm. So I so want to point out something. You know, there are a lot of movies. You know, there are a lot of challenges. You know, because you you are not your, but you you basically putting yourself uh, into shoes of uh, the hero and trying to your walk changes, your experience changes. So you know, it makes a lot of difference. So there are some things which we have to take from the movies, but yeah, not not everything, especially you know the sarcasm and. Uh, the violence and uh, you know giving back uh, i think that that has to be this of uh, so uh, very true ravi because now that we are locked down all that we want to do is probably watch movie right and listen to music and sometimes even music gives that rush in you to uh, get aggressive because it depends upon what kind of music are you listening to what kind of movie are you watching i put netflix and you know there are certain uh, series that come up where there is so much blood where there is so much violence and people are like crazy to watch the series and you know i get messages from my friend hey are you watching this and i'm like my god there's so much violence and especially in this isolation you watch something like that i don't know what can happen yeah it is good yeah. entertainment is good but i still feel that you don't have to uh, impart those uh, you know violent uh, actions uh, or try to do it uh, you know at home so That's movies right. are good especially movies yeah, as, as long as you watch it as a drama or a movie and you don't you know sort of uh, bring it into your own life and normalize it and think that okay you know this is something that even i can imbibe uh, mm-hmm. then i think then you're safe you can watch more of it <laughs> so anybody in the audience wants to come uh, online and you know uh, share uh, your perspective uh, Anybody else, Kanjana? You feel yes. If anybody wants to uh, come and share your insight, guys, I'm gonna ping it on my watch party that's going online. And Ravi, you can do the same in your uh, account as well. Probably we can have. You can also ping me, and I can share the uh, link with link using which uh, you can actually, you know, uh, you know, come online and you know share. Uh, perspective about domestic violence so there is one of my friends nidhi sharma she has shared something so i want to just uh, read that out it brings a lot of psychological changes i battled depression but third instance of domestic violence i mustered courage and walked out after 9 years parents and siblings have to be supportive and mine were and i'm grateful for my parents and siblings who supported me i picked up a job soon after we separated and i am so glad i left the abusive marriage and gave myself and my son a better life it wasn't easy but not impossible i am married again for the second time and i have a wonderful spouse we need to kill the stigma around walking out of a marriage where domestic violence exists in any form so she was share this um, with everyone so i thought why not i just read it out because i know uh, nadi she has been battling depression and a lot and she's out of it and she's in a beautiful marriage right now and her son is part of uh, their family as well now 
he calls his father as father, his stepfather as father. He's 21. The son. So yeah, she just wanted to share that. It's it's lovely and it's it's so strong and brave. Yeah. Sorry, Wait, come out, come out vocally, telling that okay, it is okay to walk out of an abusive marriage. It takes a lot of guts. <laughs> So it's not easy. It's not easy. And in fact, uh, I think uh, uh, I think one of the basic questions that uh, people who people who have uh, who encounter abuse are asked is why haven't you run away? Why don't you leave? You know, things like that. But it's, it's not easy. In fact, one of the, the biggest reasons a lot of uh, victims of abuse do not leave is because they're scared, scared they might even get killed if they leave because these the, their partners are already very controlling you know and they already have displayed so much of violence so if they leave them there's an even bigger threat of violence you know so uh, so from from my research and from conversations i know that one of the biggest reasons a lot of people do not leave their marriages or relationships is because of even greater fear of being killed or of being harmed you know in a in a in a bigger way so Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, Rimani Garu, again, thanks for the comment. What family drama? And, what family uh, dramas, yes. Yeah, I know what movie you're referring to. I exactly know <laughs> which Hindi movie you're referring to. <laughs> which one? <laughs> so, yeah, uh, any guesses, uh, Samantha Chandana? Watch family dramas. Uh, is it something like Dilwale Dulhaniya Le Jayenge? <laughs> No, no, no. She is, she is referring to Bagban. <laughs> Bagban, okay. Yeah, but I, I think uh, you know a lot of these family dramas not only have uh, you know talk about love, but they have a lot of uh, uh, insights about uh, you know uh, the relationships. So <laughs> we always feel that it's only about hero heroing, but you know it, it connects uh, to a greater audience within the movie. So, uh, yeah, so there's another comment. Why you walk out? There is a solution for every problem. Yes, exactly. That that's the point. That's the whole intention of uh, you know uh, this particular program, awareness program, that we want to pass on the message saying that if you have a problem of you have a you know neighbor who's got this problem of domestic violence, you know I think you can speak out. Uh, you can talk about it. You can report. And there are agencies you can suggest, you know, if you have a friend or a neighbor who has this issue, um, take, you know, have a one to one suggestion saying that, you know, why don't you cancel something? Why, why don't you be work together to uh, solve this particular issue and then, you know, take it forward, see issues, differences, uh, process, and, you know, basically report it uh, to the agencies. In this particular chat, we will also leave some numbers uh, of uh, domestic violences. Uh, we also have. Uh, uh, you know, numbers for each city, uh, not only for uh, but uh, because we had uh, audience from across uh, India and you know, few audience watching from uh, other locations. So we will share all the numbers um, across all the cities uh, in uh, you know in India where they can approach. So, yeah, you, you definitely have a very good neighbor. <laughs> Thank you so much. It has been a really good conversation, right? It's been a wonderful conversation, and I'm so glad to have been a part of this. Thank you. Thanks for this initiative. I think you know, I should really compliment on you taking up this particular initiative because uh, you know it's like, as we said, you know, it's 25 days of uh, quarantine. You know, that's that's exactly uh, we are at 25th day. Okay. I think we'll have a few more days, uh, almost a week more to, you know, uh, come out of it. And uh, until then, I think we can, you know, watch out for ourselves, our neighbors, not, right. not encourage in yes. these discussions. Yes. And just uh, hope that a lot more victims turn into survivors and move out of that. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, everyone who has joined us and given your insight through, uh, you know, the comments that you have made. It really helped us, and I'm sure it helped others as well who are watching. And I want to thank each and everyone, actually, you know, right from 
you know, Sureka, Ankita, and uh, we had Kalpana, Ramesh Garu, and Akanksha. Ravi, thank you so much. <laughs> Getting, you know, he put all this together, and he's the man behind all that is happening, to be honest. But he keeps telling that I am the one who has initiated. But he has been great help. Most welcome, so far. Thanks, Ravi. Thank, thank you, Chandana. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ajita and uh, Samantha. Thank, also thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, Sureka, Alcantara, and uh, all, all the people who have joined there. Brunal Nigaru, thanks for engaging during the entire. Yeah. So, so active and so tuned in. <laughs> all your comments are like popping up. I, I did screen one or two of them. Don't mind about that. But um, thanks a lot, uh, Firoz, Jonathan, and uh, you yeah. know all the people who uh, joined the podcast and you know watched us online. Um, you know, uh, three requests from my side. Please uh, spread the awareness by uh, sharing the video. Uh, okay, sharing the live broadcast. Or you can start a watch party if you want all of your friends. Uh, the reason we're doing this on Facebook, not on Zoom, is because uh, each one of you have the power of when you share, you have your hundreds of friends can actually see this and you know they, they you can create awareness. And uh, all you have to do is share and uh, yeah, spread the word out and uh, we can definitely do another session if you need. But uh, I think we we been you know uh, all all the audience and you know people who guests who joined and have uh, given good uh, inputs. So just spread the word out and you know say no to domestic violence. So I am going to pledge. Uh, I'm the first one to pledge uh, on behalf of uh, men saying that uh, you know no to domestic violence uh, against women, children, or uh, you know elders at home. Uh, I would request all the other men who have watched this particular meeting uh, video, and all the men who wanted to join and complain about your wife, uh, you know, but couldn't. They can also, you know, uh, please pledge and spread the word out. And any consequences? Consequences at home after pledging? Uh, do let me know. Give me a call. We can, you know, sort of things uh, offline. One on one. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you, Sureka. I still see you there. Living. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Sureka. <laughs> Bye. -bye.